So when we talk about food safety, there's two issues really in my mind. Number one is like the immediate issue of things like food poisoning. So contaminated food, bacteria. And then there's a long-term issue of bioaccumulation of chemicals, antibiotics, and stuff that could possibly cause things like cancer later down the road. So obviously, when you come to Vietnam, you're gonna see a lot of street food. A lot of people selling stuff on the street without any fridges. It's the food safe to eat in Vietnam. And I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the topic. So what about things like chemicals, pesticides, antibiotics, residues of things that sound a little bit nasty in your food here? Well, there's, a, there's quite a lot of anxiety in Vietnam around food. And depending on who you talk to, people might say to you, well, you shouldn't shop at the market because the food is, is tainted. It's adulterated. You should shop at Big C. You should shop at the supermarket, Mega Mart. And one of the problems here is like traceability. So you, you just don't know where your food is coming from. Like, you know, you go into the market, as you can see here, guys, you know, food looks, it looks pretty good, but where does it come from? Is it coming from China? Is it coming from somewhere that has very poor quality soil, very poor quality tainted water next to it? And that's one of the issues here, food traceability, food accountability. It really is quite hard to know where stuff is coming from. There was a recent newspaper article here in the Vietnam Express newspaper that found out that 50%, I believe it was 50%, of food in the market was tainted with pesticide residue. And they do send teams out into the market to do sporadic spot checks, like environmental health type teams. and. They tested a load of vegetables, meats, fish, and they found that like almost half of the, the stuff they tested was contained over the WHO recommended limits for pesticide residue. And also kind of more concerning things like antibiotics. So antibiotic use is, is very common in animal rearing because, well, for obvious reasons, it, but the issue with it is, it's used routinely when it's not needed. So, for example, a lot of the farmers here, raising pigs, raising, raising chickens, they will routinely administer antibiotics like ciprofloxacin, and they don't always need them. They often don't need them, but it's just part of the feed. They put it in the animal feed, so I hear. So this does kind of build up, enter the food chain, build up, and then obviously gets passed on through bioaccumulation into the end, the end consumer, which is you and I. I eat quite a lot of fish here. Uh, there's a fish I love called uh, ka kachim. It's like a white fish. It's kind of similar to like cod or place. If you're from Europe, you probably know about cod and place. It's a very white meaty fish, kind of neutral taste, but there's not many bones in it as well. I like it, easy to eat. But because it's like quite a high, the meat in it is quite dense, a high density of meat, like similar to tuna. You get a lot of bioaccumulation of heavy metals, things like that. And I've really started worrying about like, you know, what kind of metals are in the meat and the fish? Are there antibiotics left in here? And you may have heard, or you may have read that in Southeast Asia in particular, there's real issues with antibiotic resistance. So what does that mean? Well. It means that the bacteria that could once be treated very easily with antibiotics are now evolving or mutating and becoming much, much more difficult to, to treat and eradicate. And how does that happen? Well, if you're not completing courses of antibiotics, if you're taking low doses or you're taking them very often when you don't need them, then the bacteria that may be there naturally or at low levels become used to antibiotics. And of course, they then evolve and they're no longer affected by the antibiotics. So that's something I worry about if there's antibiotics in meat, meat and fish. Is it giving rise to antibiotic resistance? Well, yeah, possibly, I don't really know. But it is a big issue in Southeast Asia and it could be one of the contributing factors for sure.
public concern here is quite high into food safety and food quality. People will pay a lot of money for imported food. You see like, you know, imported Australian broccoli selling for like $10. And, you know, local broccoli costs like 20 cents or something. And people here who are wealthy always go for the imported stuff. Partly, I think, because you can trace it, they can, you know, they know exactly where it's coming from and where it's been grown, things like that. But should you be worried? Should you be concerned about food food safety in countries such as Vietnam? Well, there was an article, a scientific article, published in 2017 in February, I think, and that looked at perception, people's perception of food hygiene and food risk in Vietnam, and they. The conclusion was that the perception is quite high, but they couldn't find any correlation between the pesticides used and the levels of cancer in the country. I know this study, I don't particularly like this study, the design of it is not so good in my opinion. And it's kind of, I feel the conclusion is a little bit generalized. But they basically say that people's perception is worse than the reality and WHO testing has shown that carcinogens, so cancer causing chemicals, are not as high in food here as what was previously thought. However, we get more recent articles that contradict this and say that there are high levels of pesticides and residues, especially in food on the markets here. So who are we to believe? What can we do about this? Well, it's a really tricky one actually. And will it stop me eating food on the market? No, it won't. Will it stop me eating street food? Well, I don't eat a lot of street food anyway. You can probably see from my blogs, I don't do much stuff on food. I prefer to cook myself at home. So I got a reasonable idea about what's going into my food. One of the issues that's been raised is Vietnam has a fairly high rate of cancer and this seems to be increasing quite quickly. And one of the cancers that's quite high here is liver cancer. So in my opinion, the reasons for this is testing is becoming much better here and Vietnam is slowly, or at the moment it's a lower middle income country, but it's slowly becoming more and more wealthy. The citizens are getting more money every year. So then that allows them to go and get tests, go and get things checked. So maybe the level of cancer has always been a little bit high, but now it's just being discovered a little bit more because people are able to check, check themselves out, whereas before they may have just left it because they couldn't afford to get tests, etc., and they couldn't afford to pay a doctor. So that's one way to look at it. I also think there's other things apart from the food, like pollution. Air pollution is, is fairly high here, especially in the north of the country. And other factors like water, drinking water, the traceability of that is uh, kind of dubious as well. So I think for sure there's other factors, environmental as well as food issues. So will it stop me from eating the food? No, it won't. I don't really have much choice because I live here. <laughs> but no, I think uh, food here is, is generally very healthy. And compared to like processed food and Western diet, it's much, much better here. And I've talked about this in the numerous other videos. Things like obesity in Vietnam and why it's so low. I think it's like 2.1% in Vietnam, lowest rate of obesity in the world. There was some news stories recently about the EU banning noodles from uh, Vietnam. Some sort of chemical was over their limits. So they banned some noodles. Also some uh, rambutan fruit was, was stopped because for similar reasons, they, they weren't happy with the level of some pesticide they found in it. But I think that's been lifted now and that fruit is now being allowed back into the EU. But I'd love to hear your opinions on this, guys. Again, it's quite polarizing and controversial. 
I have colleagues from 25 up to 75 years old and they all have very vastly different views on food hygiene here and food quality, food traceability. So it's really interesting to hear people's opinion. If you live in Vietnam, let me know what you think. Do you think the food here is safe? I don't personally eat out at street food restaurants very often. When I have eaten out at street food restaurants, I've never really had any issues with food poisoning. Off the top of my head, touch wood. <laughs> I don't wanna, don't wanna jinx it. But you know, you will see things here like the Bambi stand. There's a lot of meat in there, a lot of pate. There's no fridge there. It's in the 36 degree heat all day. And yet, you know, people don't typically get sick from that. So it's quite interesting. But I think it comes out of common sense with things like street food and restaurants. If the place is busy, I think the odds are more in your favor. If you go to some quiet place in a quiet town and you're the only customer, <laughs> Who knows what they're going to be heating up behind the scenes for you. Although maybe they cook everything fresh there and then, so it's not an issue. It's always a little bit of a roll of the dice and, you know, when I travel, if I'm traveling somewhere or going somewhere on my bike, I try to eat like as clean as possible because you don't want to be caught out cycling with stomach issues. <laughs> So there we have it folks, just a quick one touching on food safety today. I think it's a, quite a pertinent and important topic, uh, but quite a difficult one as well to, to get to the bottom of. So take it easy folks, have a great day, weekend, wherever you are in the world, catch you later.